same thing and keep the same habits and keep this and keep that and keep that. But all that really does is just keep you designed to be in the same place that you were and time passes and nothing changes. You know, me personally, this is me. People can do whatever they want to do because they grown. And I'm always in support of grown people doing what grown people want to do. You grown, you pay taxes, have at it, do what you want, right? For me personally, I never understood living in the same place my entire life and never, ever, ever uh, going anywhere. I never understood that. To me, all of that is silly because how do you know if that's the best place for you? Uh, why would you, you know what I'm saying? The world is so huge. There's so much to see, know, be, and do. You just don't choose. You're just going to choose to be in the same spot for the duration of your entire life. You will live an entire life never making a move. And I'm not saying you got to just give up your property and give up where you're from and don't plant roots. And when I used to say that, people used to always like assume or, you know, try to play me like I was against planting roots or being stable. Never. And what's interesting is the same people that accused me that I was always more stable than them. Like if you really matched us up against what they had going on versus what I had going on. You know what I'm saying? There are so many people that are one or two paychecks away from being homeless, period, that you wouldn't know that you don't say, wait, it's like, oh, no, not really. This is what's going on. And this is what I'm working on. You know what I'm saying? And so uh, for me personally, um, I have created so many different ways to transition. I've become like this expert of like, number one, survival, but two, like transitioning. Uh, I've become this expert of taking what, especially because comedy is what really helped me do that more than anything, because that's what comedians do. Comics have a skill of taking something that pains them, that irritates them, that bothers them, and turning it into humor. Or just something that they recognize that they think is ironic. They take something that they observe. Comics are the master observer, the funniest ones are the master observers. They take things that they see, that they, like sometimes they don't even have to be super painful, they just don't understand it. And so they're taking something that they're looking at that they don't really understand and they try to break down the logic. And they come up with either funny solutions about it, funny opinions about it, uh, funny ways of looking at it, and they present it to an audience and that creates the laugh. Essentially, that's what comedy is all about, period. You understand? So like comedy was the biggest thing that showed me how to just, oh shit, I'm, I'm moving, I have everything I possibly own in my car. I'm in Iowa, somewhere I don't live, somewhere that's not lit at all for a young black woman. Oh, and my BMW breaks down. Furthermore, if I was in a Yugo or some other type of car, that would be different. But a black woman in a BMW that's not station that's stationary because it's broken down is a target. And I have everything I own in this car because I'm moving cross country and it's broken down and I'm just stuck in Iowa. This is shitty. Not the situation I want to be in. But it happens. Now I have to experience this, take this, figure out how it happened, why it happened, what I learned from it, and now it's material. How can I make this funny? What happened? And I still haven't really talked about that experience the way I could talk about that experience. Um, so that'll be some more material for me to make me excited. But my point is, I learned from it, and now it's material. How can I make this funny? What happened? And I still haven't really talked about that experience the way I could talk about that experience. Um, so that'll be some more material for me to make me excited. But my point is, we have these experiences that aren't pleasant. And the comic in us takes them and makes them something. The week before my 28th birthday, I'm 27. And y'all know, y'all heard of the, 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 the curse of the 27. The 27 curse. Plus, I got this going. The 27 club and shit. I'm in L.A. I'm on the 101 freeway. I'm moving into, you know, a place out in the valley down the street from my job, right? And... Coincidentally, um, I'm hosting a show on the patio. Like, a, you know, I had my job and uh, I turned it into a place where I threw comedy shows, okay? Dual purpose. And we were doing comedy on the patio. Okay, so um, I'm moving to a place that's down the street from that job and said in my show, you know, um, and I'm on the freeway and uh, my back tire blows out. That was a problem for a couple reasons. I need fine. I'm used to always having to be strong and be the person that gives myself what I need, whatever. Well, uh, somebody suggested me this, this uh, place that sells used tires, right? I wasn't really um, sold on the idea of going to a used tire place, but I was in a situation where I could afford what I could afford. This problem needs to be fixed. And so, you know, it's my job to fix it because I just gotta get around. Like, what am I supposed to do, right? So I go to this used tire place, I get the used tire, and, um, you know, it worked over. Here's one of the reasons why going to that used tire place kind of like made me a little upset when I almost, when I ended up in an accident that almost killed me. I wasn't sold on trying to go to the used tire place, right? But I was in a situation uh, where that was what I could afford. And so I went with it, right? And some weirdo is in my life that they don't have to be in calling me a narcissist because I'm talking about me, but that's what everybody does. People are so weird, you guys. They're so crazy. I have nothing. People are weird. Anyway, so um, I was, the person that told me about the used tire place was criticizing me about me spending money to go somewhere else. They were criticizing, you know, you ain't got to always pay, blah, 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 right? And this is one thing, this is another reason why, you know, I'm healing my desire, my, my need for feedback um comics that you know comedians we can become addicted to feedback that's what a lot of people don't know one of the things that makes a a, a comic that's passionate about stand-up comedy so passionate is we're attracted to that instant gratification we're attracted to that instant uh um some weirdo is in here with a confederate flag talking about Gen uh, general lee it's like pyro um we're attracted to that instant feedback that instant gratification the beautiful thing about being a comedian is you put that joke out there they either laugh or they don't 
Ain't no feelings, ain't no phony, phony stuff, ain't no extra, you know, it's to the point. Is this funny or not? Tell me. And you get it, you get that instant gratification, you get that instant, you know, they laugh, this is funny, cool. They don't laugh, I still believe in this joke, I'm passionate about it, that lets me know this joke needs work. And you go back and you do the work. They, they, or, you know, you didn't have confidence in the joke, no way, you were just throwing it out just to see how far it goes or whatever, whatever. There was also those jokes. You throw that out there, you get what you receive, you take what you need from it. That's how we break down the mechanics and the science of what we do as comedians. Um, a lot of comedians come from a lot of painful environments. That's why they are so funny. That's why they become masters of transforming pain to profit, basically, because you're getting paid to tell those jokes. You know, you don't stay doing free shows forever. You know, you, even if you do free shows, you're doing for exposure, you're doing for, you know, your different reasons, but you're doing this to get paid. You're doing this to get a check. You're doing this to profit. And comedians are masters at transforming pain to profit, right? Uh, well, comedy isn't just one way that I've transformed my pain to profit. Doing tarot was a way that I transformed pain for myself because I had these abilities where I would feel these things and know these things, but I don't trust myself, you know, for a lot of reasons, because, you know, I'm always made to feel like I'm wrong no matter what I do. And that came from old stuff, childhood stuff. No matter what I do, I'm always wrong. Even when I'm right, I'm wrong. I used to have a stand-up joke about it. Even when I'm right, even when people can clearly see the logic in what I'm talking about, oh, I'm still wrong. It's not gonna matter. I'm wrong. It's just, you know, and um, I used to, I used to do a joke about it and I said, Ronnie's always wrong. You know, it rhymes and all that. It has wordplay. Ronnie's always wrong. And even in my life, even if you look at these comments still to this day, you have people that know me clearly that are stalking my page all on my social media just to say in so many words, Ronnie's wrong. Still, I'm 37 and I still have this. So, you know, I'm not even BSing about my environment. Okay. And so, um, me personally, it's taking work, inner work for me to even trust myself for the things that I know that I feel, for the things I know that I see. And then you had an extra spiritual element about it and people aren't really into that and they don't really want to talk about that or they don't, they're ignorant of it. That's something that's so, you know, personal and, and, um, and I already knew I had these abilities and I didn't want to be looked at any more weirder or any more wronger than I was. So I kept it to myself. Yeah, you, you have all that going on. Yeah, you don't, you don't want to uh, tell people about it or share that part of yourself. But tarot became a way of me doing that. Not only doing that, but connecting with others and also seeing that, oh, other people have this ability and this is how they use it and this is what they're doing. But also this is how I can use the things that I see and feel to help others and also get others to do the same thing um, and, and learn themselves more intimately and, and, and utilize what they have. OK, in order to build their dream life, love life, what have you. Right. Weight loss. I was always a thick girl, you know, shaped like my mama. Always, oh, you got them hips. You got them. Hips. Oh, ooh, ooh. in the black culture, you know, it's it's praised. It's, 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 it's swag in Latino cultures, too. The only people that don't really feel that the swag is mainstream Eurocentric culture, which is why every time I look in the comments and people got something to say about me, like I'm built irregularly. I know that it's coming from people who are non-black, who are more likely Caucasian and they're probably closet homosexual as well. So it's like they don't even look at women as sexy anyway. So they just come in here and say all kind of wild stuff because they don't find women attractive, let alone black women attractive. So, you know, they're very cold and very biting with their comments. They're very mean. You know what I'm saying? And if I internalize all of that, then that would be whatever. But because I know the source of where a lot of that comes from, I just let it, you know, whatever. But anyhow. Growing up, you know, I was always thick and all of this other stuff. And so, like I said, in our culture, you know, that's smiled upon. And so it always brought this extra attention that I wasn't always comfortable with from, you know, men. I would be more comfortable with the attention from women because it would be, you know, a, a way for us to bond. You know what I'm saying? So it's, oh, girl, you got that. You know, girl, show that. Don't be, no, 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 show that. Girl, I'm trying to get like you. I'm trying to get like you. You know what I'm saying? And that's, that feels a lot more welcoming and friendlier than, you know, the predatory way that dudes noticed how I was built. But the backfire of it is, you know, coming from a parent who, you know, wasn't really secure in her shape, you know, and had her own pain that she was dealing with. And so I was always made to feel like I need to number one, cover up. Oh, you should, you showing too much, you doing too much, show up, cover up, cover up. So it, it created like this shame culture about my shape. Um, and then also um, there was this, um, this feeling of, you know, I always liked food, I always was into food. Don't eat too much, eating too much, eating too much, you don't, you don't end up being big. This feeling of, you know, I always liked food, I always was into food. Don't eat too much, eating too much, eating too much, you don't, you don't end up being big. And I'm looking at my mom and she's never been in shape a day of her life. Like it wasn't like this was coming from like a gym trainer mom, you know what I mean? Like somebody who had a bomb banging body, a body that I would want to replicate. And so it would just be like, uh, okay. Um, and so like my weight fluctuating was always an issue or something that I wanted to pay attention to. And the year I decided I want to get in control of this, which was 2013, I, I officially just invested in Weight Watchers and was like, whatever. And I got control of it. Not only did I get control of it, I, I felt more confident about myself. I felt more sexy. I felt more, a lot of things. And I wanted to share and show that just to celebrate myself um, because it was a big accomplishment to me. And it was something that I did out of self-love. Um, and I totally am sensitive to that process, to that, 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 um, that desire, that all that. And so I can relate to, you know, women who have that, that burden, that thorn in their side due to weight loss, weight gain, weight fluctuation, all of that. Like I can be there. You know what I'm saying? As a sister, as uh, somebody who had the same pain and crossed over to, you know, solution and, and, and yes, this is awesome and coach them and show them this is how I did it. And this is what it is. And this is really the key to consistency. And this is what's going to get you the results that you need. Forget what everybody else is talking about. This is what worked because everybody want to come in here and try to tell you how to do you. But this is what's going to work. This is what you need. Like that came from that. And that was a way that I transitioned from pain to, you know, success. The sex piece is super duper important because once again, the shape, all this other stuff. 
and all of that. It was always other people's desires and all of this other stuff, which led me to be in this like weird system, a world of denying my desires or denying myself and not being able to express myself loudly and proudly in the different ways that I wanted to. And I'm just over that because the older you get, the more life should be easier. And so what I'm doing is trying to implement all of the ways that I can incorporate and make my life easier. And in the same vein, commit to the same vision I had even when I was younger. Yo, I'm here and I'm gonna do everything that I want to do to live out loud and make life fun and make it be this tapestry that I wanna have. Um, and so that's what's going on. Um, I'm making this video to make everybody aware of what's coming up, what my products and services are going to be about. I've already did a previous live that's on my Facebook fan page, that's on this page about it. So you're gonna see YouTube channels popping up about all of these different disciplines and it's encouraging people to basically get in where they fit in with it. And that's what I'm doing. They say my battery's about to, you know, whatever. So I'm in this video, but thank God for all these different disciplines. And it's encouraging people to basically get in where they fit in with it. And that's what I'm doing. They say my battery's about to, you know, whatever. So I'm in this video, but thank God for listening. Appreciate y'all so much. Peace.